Symptoms of a dying empire are arrogance and a refusal to adapt to change. The M1 Abrams tank is an outdated Cold War symbol of the power of the U.S. Army. It was designed in the 1970s, costs far too much to maintain and upgrade, burns far too much fuel, lacks overhead protection from drones, and is far too heavy for most off-road operations and rural bridges. This was exposed during the war in Ukraine when M1 tanks were easily destroyed on the battlefield. The Ukrainians were sent 31 70-ton M1s and quickly asked to trade them for German Leopard tanks since the super-heavy M1s easily got stuck in mud, broke down often, and required daily refueling. The Ukrainians did like the U.S. Army's 34-ton diesel-powered Bradley infantry fighting vehicle that prove reliable and mobile. Russian designers keep tank weight under 45 tons to allow travel over farmland that is frequently plowed or wet. The old Russian T-72 design was effective in Ukraine because it is only 45 tons and a much smaller target than the M1, yet carries a 125 millimeter gun compared to the M1's 120 millimeter. U.S. Army M1s had slaughtered Iraqi T-72s that lacked thermal imaging to see through smoke and darkness. Iraq also had a hard desert surface, while the U.S. Army had unlimited fuel from the region. Upgraded T-72s in Ukraine today have modern thermal imaging systems and can travel over farmland soil. Most of the level terrain in Europe is farmland, so super-heavy tanks are confined to compacted roads or training grounds with compacted soil. Here is a news clip about problems operating the 62-ton British tank in Ukraine. So even just on a training exercise, we've seen the main problem that the challenge has been facing here in Ukraine and that's its mobility. It keeps getting stuck in the mud. And if you have a look at the terrain, it's this soft, deep, rich black soil that's been proving problematic for it in this war. It's been one of the messages that the Ukrainian tank crews have given us since we got here is that whilst this Challenger is formidably precise, Actually, they've had real problems with it here in Ukraine because of its mobility. And they just said it's too heavy, it's underpowered, and it keeps getting stuck. And you can see that's exactly what has happened here. The that was a 62-ton tank. Super heavy tanks, like the M1, also impose more stress on suspension, wheels, and tracks, so break down more often and are difficult to transport for repair. Upgrades to the M1 tank always added more weight, so grew in weight from 60 to 78 tons. In 2021, the Pentagon's Director of Operational Test and Evaluation wrote that the latest M1A2C is too heavy to be towed by current tank recovery vehicles, too heavy for the Army's tactical bridges, and too heavy for tank transport trucks. The M1 tank, shown here burning in Ukraine, was designed to defend West Germany from a Soviet invasion. Fuel consumption was unimportant since it wouldn't move far on the defense and fuel storage facilities existed nearby. It uses a gas turbine engine that provides more power per weight but burns three times more fuel than diesel engines used in almost all tanks in the world and requires far more routine maintenance. Another drawback is that gas turbine engines generate four times more heat, so soldiers cannot follow behind. In an age where everyone has thermal sensors, even cheap drones, an M1 can be spotted for much further than a diesel tank. These problems have been known for decades. See the excellent 1990 report from POGO linked in the description.
Gas turbine engines normally burn a fuel similar to gasoline that explodes if it leaks and mixes with air. Diesel fuel is like charcoal lighter. It burns slow, so fires are much easier to extinguish. This huge problem was revealed in Iraq when mighty M1 tanks were hit with small rockets. Their impact did little damage, but often caused fuel lines to break and spew explosive fuel onto the hot engine, causing a fire that quickly engulfed the tank. As a result, a diesel engine option was developed for the M1 because prospective foreign buyers insisted on one, but the U.S. Army refused to adopt it. All tanks proved easy to destroy on the modern battlefield in Ukraine. As was predicted in a 2017 G2 Mill article, The Tank is Dead, linked in the description. They were designed in an era where enemy fire came from the front, so heavy armor is located around its frontal arc. Modern tanks are designed to battle tanks, yet in Ukraine they were destroyed by other tanks only 10% of the time. Modern long-range anti-tank missiles and drones can attack from any side, so avoid striking the front. Striking thin top armor is common, as shown here with the Russian tank in Ukraine. The simple solution was to add an armored canopy atop tanks. This video shows a Russian tank in Ukraine with a canopy that stops three drone hits. The Ukrainian army quickly added canopies, as did the Israeli army, but the bureaucratic U.S. Army has not. The U.S. Army Science Board recently recognized the need to move past the outdated M1 tank. See the article linked in the description. They say a lighter tank is needed, but also a bigger gun for longer range engagements, along with robotics and other ultra-expensive high-tech gadgets. The U.S. Army already spends $23 million just to upgrade each older M1 tank with the latest high-tech gadgets. And they don't even add an armored canopy. As the war in Ukraine and Gaza demonstrated, tanks are easily knocked out in combat and their new active protection systems rarely protected them. The U.S. Army's air mobile units have demanded a lighter tank for years, so are now receiving the new M10 Booker shown here. This is a medium tank at 42 tons with a diesel engine, so far better than the M1 for strategic and tactical mobility, although it costs $15 million each. The M10 only has a 105 millimeter gun and no armored canopy, so it's basically the old M60 tank design from the 1960s with less armor. It is excellent for its intended role of blasting light infantry in poor nations without modern anti-tank weapons, but not a good tank to fight a modern army. The war in Ukraine demonstrated the value of longer-range guns, so tanks can avoid short-range anti-tank weaponry and dodge long-range missiles to provide direct fire support. Each tank can employ its own drone to identify distant targets and even correct fire, even if the tank crew cannot see targets directly. The basic tactic is for a tank to dash forward a mile, quickly fire off 10 rounds, then retreat and hide before attack drones arrive. Once the tank starts firing, it takes several minutes for the enemy to identify the source of the fire and launch attack drones. This is why the Army Science Board advocated a longer range 130 mm or 140 mm gun for a new tank, but that would make it even heavier. The Army needs a tank with a bigger gun that weighs and costs less. The solution is based on the most successful German armored vehicle in World War II. The Stug III was easy to produce without a turret, which allowed a lower profile, less weight, and a much stronger body. It wasn't intended as a tank destroyer, yet killed more enemy tanks than any German tank designed during the war. The famous German heavy Tiger tank was feared, but few were produced since they were very expensive, broke down often, were difficult to repair, and lacked off-road mobility. The best option today would be based on the U.S. Army's old M44 howitzer design. It used the standard 155mm howitzer 
that fires a projectile twice the distance with twice the explosive power of a 120 millimeter high explosive projectile. Precision hits are possible with laser or GPS guided rounds. A 155 millimeter high explosive shell may not penetrate a modern heavy tank, but will destroy it. Even a near miss will cause damage and kill anyone near the tank. The M44 provided long range fire support so didn't need a complex and expensive turret to rapidly engage targets from any direction. No turret means much lower procurement and maintenance cost and a stronger vehicle that weighed thousands of pounds less. The advantage of the M44's rear ramp is that loading ammunition was far easier than the newer turreted M109 155mm howitzer and allows the crew to quickly leap off to escape incoming drones and missiles. The M44 weighed just 32 tons. So with a modern diesel engine, designers can add several thousand more pounds of armor and an armored canopy and remain below 40 tons. Moreover, the simple M44 design should cost half as much to procure and maintain and prove more survivable with a canopy and more armor all around. Before anything is funded as a replacement for M1 tanks, its numbers must be slashed to free funding and manpower. Even after Cold War downsizing, the U.S. Army still has 2,640 M1 super heavy tanks in service and another 2,000 in storage. It costs billions of dollars each year to maintain and operate these monsters that eat up a huge portion of the U.S. Army's budget. One can debate the value of super heavy tanks on the modern battlefield, but the U.S. Army has far too many in service, especially for an expeditionary force. Quickly slashing this number to 1,000 tanks is a solution to Army manpower and funding shortages. These may be upgraded with diesel engines and an armored canopy, or eventually replaced with a new design. Scratching surplus M1s will also provide the U.S. Army with the 10-year supply of M1 spare parts and engines. That is good news for the U.S. Army, but not for influential suppliers who collect billions of dollars each year for M1 parts and upgrades. Forceful civilian leadership must demand M1 downsizing occur within one year. Otherwise, the effort will be stalled until they leave. There are lots of retired generals who work for the M1 tank industrial complex and many in Congress who support this proven cash cow. There are thousands of career U.S. Army tank officers who will oppose cutting their promotional opportunities in half. They knew the M1 tank would fail in Ukraine, which explains why the U.S. Army delayed sending them. Without forceful leadership, this powerful gang will keep M1 tanks in the U.S. Army for decades more until they are slaughtered in a major war.